Welcome to our first video related to IDEA 10.0. In this video, we're going to create a project. And from this project, we're going to upload a accounts receivable file and do a little work with this accounts receivable file in terms of understanding some of the functionality related to IDEA 10.0. So the first thing that we want to do is to create a project. Now the project is where we keep a repository of all of our work related to a specific project. In this case, we're going to create a project. And you notice that we are in the Home section. We are clicking the Create button. And the information here is to create a new project. We then name the project. Now, we're not doing external projects. We're simply doing internal projects. We're going to call this Project Video. Project accounts receivable. We click OK. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading files into the project. Now to give you a sense of how we would navigate between one project and the other, we would click the select button. And you notice that we are in the video project accounts receivable. But in fact, if we want to go to another project, we would simply click one of these and then go into that project. But we're going to stay in the project that we have right now. The first file that we're going to be working with is an accounts receivable file. It is an access-based file. So what we want to do is we want to upload this file into our IDEA project. The way we do this is we're still at home but what we want to do is to click Desktop, because this is where our file resides. And we need to then define what type of file we're going to use. In this case, the file is a Microsoft Access file. And we want to find out where that file is. So we need to identify the file name over here. We click the three little dots over here. And it goes to our file directory. In this case, I have all these files set up very conveniently, and it's the accounts receivable file here. We are then going to click Next. What's going to take place is there's going to be a scan of this information. The scan of this information is set up in such a way that it looks to determine what kind of data is in each column. And we'll explain that in a few minutes. Now, if we want to change the name, we would change the name down here. And we're going to call this file accounts receivable. We click OK. And in just a minute, what's going to take place is this file is uploaded into the project. And we see the data over here. And then we see the file name right here. You notice that there are 300 records to it. And in fact, if you go to the bottom right hand corner, you notice it says there are 300 records. So the records are the rows. The columns includes the account number, invoice number, the type, gross amount. These are tax amounts. The paid flag essentially means that the item has been paid. And the narrative related to this file is that this file was created on April 1st. But what we're looking for is we're looking for data or transactions that occurred before April 1st. So during April 1st, some of the accounts actually were paid. So what we need to do is we need to extract these files, these transactions from the file, so that we have a clean file of accounts that actually owe us money. And then we're going to be doing a couple of things related to this. The date column essentially is the date that the transaction occurred. And then we have some additional information over here that we'll get to in subsequent videos. But I want to focus on a couple of things here. One of the first things that you want to do as you're looking at this data is sort of explore the data. So we want to, the first thing you want to do is want to look at the due date. So in the due date, what I'd like to do is I'd like to sort this in a couple of different ways so that I can understand what's actually taking place. So if we go to data over here and click sort, 
is what we want to do is we want to sort by the field and then the direction. So in this case, what we want to sort is we want to sort by the date field. And in this case, we can sort it ascending. We click OK here. And essentially what this means is the last transaction date or the earliest transaction date was 11-4-2014. If we sort it the other direction in terms of descending and we want to create a date date and we want this to be descending is what we see here is that the latest date is April 1st. So again, as we had explained earlier, is what we're looking for are transactions up to the end of the month. And the end of the month is the 31st of March, 2015. So we want to filter out the date of March or April 1st, 2015. The other thing that we want to look at, and I'll share this with you, if we go to the paid flag and we do the paid flag descending, essentially what we're going to find here is that there are a number of transactions that have actually been paid. So these transactions that have been paid are items that we need to extract out of the data as we are going to be working with it. So the easiest way that we want to be able to do this is by going to the right side over here. And the right side over here, you notice that there's a couple of things. One of which is, and I'll just go through a couple of things here, is if we want to get an amount related to the gross amount, is uh, what it says here is that the gross amount at this point is $435,000. But what we want to do, and we can keep this uh, uh, continuing, as we go forward. But what I'd like to do is to create a criteria where we're going to filter out the information related to the paid flag. In other words, we're looking for items that have not been paid. Therefore, the paid flag is not equal to P. And then we're looking for dates that are before the last date, which is March 1st, 2015. So let's look at the criteria that we have here. Now, you notice that in the criteria, there's a script bar that you see here. Over here is we have all of the columns. You notice that the columns are identified in specific uh, uh, characteristics. Account number is a character. A character is alphanumeric, or it could be numeric, but it's treated like an alpha, so we're not adding it together, we're simply using it to sort. Invoice also is a character. Gross amount is numeric, so we can do calculations with this. The taxes are numeric. The paid flag is a characteristic. And you notice that the date is a date. So what we want to do is we want to create a script where we're going to extract out the items that we don't want. So the first thing that we don't want is we don't want the paid flag to be P. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that, again, we click, double click paid flag, that will show up over here. And we want this to be not equal to. Now, we don't want it to be equal to P. You notice that this is a character. So what this means is that what you want to be able to do is you want to encase the P in the quotation marks. So paid flags are not equal to P. Mm -hmm. If we want to validate this, we click the validation and we see that that's okay. And just for your information, if we take the, the quotation marks away, is you notice that there's a syntax error. So whenever you have a character you want to make sure that it's encased in the quotation marks. So we click this, it's OK. And we'll do the date next, but I just want to see over here. So what you notice here, now at the bottom, is now there's 254 transactions out of 300. The gross amount has gone down to $370,000.
But the next thing that we want to do related to this is extract out that transaction that occurred on April 1st, 2015. So we're looking for transactions that are less than or before April 1st, 2015. So we click the criteria again, and we put our cursor right after our script related to the paid flag. We hit and. Now what we're looking for, and by the way, if you type it in, you notice that there's actually a period before and and after and. So if you're used to other uh, types of data analytic uh, software, this is just a little bit different and it's going to take you uh, a, a while to get used to it. But in, it's, it's the easiest way to do it is simply to click and. So we have and. Now what we're looking for, we're looking for the date and in this case the date is going to be less than so we have the the less than over here and it's going to be less than april 1st 2015 which as we were seeing when we sorted the data that that is the date that is the one that we want to extract out so we click the calendar over here now i'll show you a couple of different ways you you can do this you can in fact sort through this, which usually is not that big of a deal because you're usually working with current dates, but we're looking for April 1st, 2015. Now, I'll just point out a couple of things here. Is you notice that the year is first, then we have the month, 04, and then the day, 01. It also is encased in the quotation marks, the double quotation marks, which again, a little bit different than if you're using ACL, but that's what we have there. Now, once you have this, you can, if you decide you did the date wrong or something, you can go in here and you can say 2016 or whatever you want to do. As long as it's encased in the quotation marks and you have the year first, the month, and then the day. So what we're looking for is, again, we're looking for paid flag not equal to paid. So we're looking for everything that is unpaid and then what we're looking for is the due date or the date of the transaction is less than 2015 April 1st. Again, we click the validation. The valid equation is acceptable. And then we hit OK. Now what we have is we have extracted that one figure out. So we now have 253 transactions. And out of 300, the total amount that we have, the control total, is $369,255. And we have the criteria set up as we see here. So let's do some analysis related to this. So the first thing that, that might be interesting is to see how much is owed to us by each account. Okay? Uh, so to find out how much is owed to us by each account, what we want to do is we want to go to analysis and we are going to summarize. So we're going to summarize by the account. You notice that the criteria is set up here. If you want to create an additional criteria, we can add it to the right or we can actually add it to this uh, equation here. So we're summarizing by character fields. So the character field is account number. If we want to summarize it by invoice, we can certainly do that. But let's just, as a very simple transaction, summarize it by account number. We, in this case, we'll pick up all three items, the gross amount, the two separate tabs. And then what we're looking for is the sum. We can do average, variances, standard deviations. But in this case, we're just looking at sum. We hit OK and now we have the transactions so what's really neat about this which by the way the transactions that we were working with here the the tables are here so this is a table that has the information that we were looking at the summary transaction is here if we were an auditor and we wanted to let's say we wanted to see these these accounts we could click this this is a hyperlink and this will then show us the data. You could print it. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do with this after we have this. 
Okay, we're not necessarily interested in that right now, but what we want to do also, we go back to the data, and again, the, we have the right file here. It is 253 transactions out of 300. We have the criteria set up, and we have the control total over here. So we, when we click the aging report, what's taking place is the criteria that we had set up earlier comes over, and the aging date is as of today. Well, we're not looking for today. We're looking for aging as of the April 1st, 2015. So again, we can go over here, and it's not that difficult to get to April 1st, 2015. April 1st, 2015, the criteria is what we have set up over here. The, what we're looking for is we are aging based upon the due date, and we're picking up the transactions related to the gross amount. We're aging based upon days, and this is preset 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. You can change these if you like, but you don't have to change these. And we can also create a detailed aging report, but in, and then the results are going to create a separate file, and the separate file is, we're just calling this aging, which we can come back to uh, later on. So we click this, and what we have here is what we're looking at is the zero to 30 days is 161 items. We can click this, and we can extract the rec records, display the records. Displaying the records is looking like this. And what we notice here is that there's actually one account that's over 150 days. We can display this record and we can find out what we have related to this. Okay, so there's some really neat things that you can do. And what I suggest that you do at this point is begin to explore a number of the items that we have related to the analysis. One of the things that is kind of interesting, and I'm going to go back to our data set, is that we have the account number, but we don't have the name. So what we're going to do in the next, in the next uh, video is we're going to get the customer listing, take a look at the names, and then match this with the account numbers. And then there's going to be some additional things that we're going to be able to do with this data file. So I hope this helps. I thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking forward to talking to you.